All right, so this is uh, food mascots that could kick my ass tier list. This is going to be pretty great, I think. Lots of different guys here, you know, from, from all corners of the food of the grocery store and from, you know, the restaurants. Mr. Colonel Sanders here and Little Caesar. So, of course, we got to start out with uh, Little Caesar himself. Now, you know, he's he's a pretty stout fella. Am I using that word right? Is stout the word, right word I'm thinking of? No. What, what word am I thinking of? I'm, the, I'm trying to think of the word that means like... Uh, like scrawny, I guess. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. The guy's pretty small. But he's got this uh, this javelin, which would be an incredible weapon that he can use. But, you know, the, the main question here is, does the javelin still have the pizza on it when he's fighting me? Because that's like, that's a pretty important piece of the puzzle here. Because if it's still got the pizza on it, I think it's going to be a little bit harder for him to control it because it's adding a little bit of weight to the weapon. Um, I think it'd be a fair fight just because of the pizza imbalance there. Chester the cheetah. I mean, he's a cheetah. This guy's fast. Look at those shoes. He's got huge feet. He would definitely kick my ass. That guy would, would rip me apart. There's no question about it. Sam the Toucan, I believe is his name. I mean, if you give me an object to throw at the guy, I think I'm going to have a chance. But honestly, birds in general are, have a pretty huge advantage. But I mean, we're talking about how much time am I going to have in the arena with, with each of these guys? If it's infinite time, I'm definitely going to be able to, to kick his ass eventually. You know, There's only so much flying around that the toucan can do before he gets tired and has to come down. And then I can just pummel him. So I mean, I think, you know... It's, he got a lot of time. I think I could kick his ass. Little Caesar's clearly distracted by the pizza, though. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. He is, his eyes are closed. You make a good point. His eyes are closed. He's got a pizza in his hand that he's too focused on eating. His, his priorities are on the pizza. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'll move him down for that. That's a good point. We got... What is this guy's name? Tony the Tiger. I almost forgot. Tony the Tiger is a huge guy, but the, you know, the, the real question is here, would he even want to fight? I feel like Tony the Tiger is a pretty huge beacon for positivity in the, the food mascots. You know, all these guys are supposed to be jolly fellas, but Tony the Tiger is like a step above. I think, I think first of all, he'd try and resolve the conflict with uh, diplomacy. However, I mean, if I would probably agree to his terms to end the fight without getting physical. But if it did get physical, I think Tony the Tiger would definitely kick my ass. The guy is, is incredibly huge. The Kool-Aid Man. I mean, he similarly to Tony the Tiger, he's a huge figure. But my my main question here is what is what is the Kool-Aid guy's life source? Is it the Kool-Aid in there? Because I feel like if I trip him, he's gonna spill out all the contents. And then what happens after that? What happens when he's drained of all the Kool-Aid in him? I think it's game over for him. I, I mean, I feel like that's his life essence in there. So I think I think I could kick his ass. I mean, we'll put him up a little bit because, I mean, I think he could get a couple hits on me. It's like not a... 
it's not a a 100% certainty that he I'm going to be able to trip him right away. You know, we're going to get physical a little bit, but eventually I think I will be able to trip him and it's game over for him after that. I mean, on top of that, his he's made a glass. He can he's probably going to just crack into a million pieces. If he can break through a wall, he can break your bones. Well, that's the thing. I'm going to evade him. I think I can have, I think I, I, he's, he's not that fast. He can't be that fast. Look at him. He's got, he's not fast. He's just strong. But I think his weakness is, is just his body. He's made of glass. I think I can trip him. Especially if he's going to be trying to run after me. I think he's going to trip over himself to be, to be honest. I could probably run in a circle and catch up to him and like punch him in the back of the head and he just falls over because he's like too focused on completing the circle. Because he can't, he can't even turn his head so he doesn't even know where I'm going to be. Like his face is on his body. It's, he's just at an incredible disadvantage with his body type. I'm sorry. We got the Raisin Brand Sun. I mean, it's the sun. What what do what do I say about that? I feel like the sun would have. If we're talking about the if if he has the properties of the sun itself. I mean, if I step in the arena with a guy, he's gonna burn me to death immediately. I mean, I think. I think it's game over with the sun. That's like no. I have no shot. I don't know who this guy is. I've seen him before, but I just I just don't know who he represents. Is this like a, is this a toad or is it an alligator or what is it? Is it a frog? It's some sort of amphibian. I, I understand that. Does he have a name? I don't know. He doesn't look very strong. He looks pretty weak. But honestly, that's his name, Kellogg Smacks, or that's the, the food item. Never heard of it. He looks like, I think we're, we would like, if, if, if you're trying to build a card for me for boxing, I think I'd probably get matched up with this guy, to be honest. Like we're probably the same weight, maybe same height. Maybe I'm a little bit taller than him, but I think this is a fair fight here. Like he's not that strong, but I'm not either. I think that's, that's a fair fight. The Jolly Bee guy. I mean, first of all, he's not even dressed to fight. He's wearing a, a bow tie. Like that's that's already kind of a couple points taken off of you. You're coming to fight and you're gonna be dressed up like this. You're overdressed, my friend. I think he's just a little bit too. He's, he's a little bit too large for, for fighting, you know? He's just... I, I don't feel like he would be able to be as delicate as you need to in a fight to really get the upper hand. Also, we're talking about this guy being like a a mascot. And like, there's an actual human under there. That's a whole nother story. That's another disadvantage that this guy is going to have. But I'm going to just play it as if this is the guy I'm fighting and it's not like a mascot or anything. Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's just something about it where I think that I would have the advantage on him. I can't really put my finger on it. Just, I think it's the bow tie. Chef Boy RD. I mean, he's, he's old. But I feel like he's got to have some pretty good fighting experience. You know, he, he's an old wise man. I think he would be a sleeper. You know, he'd be the guy that you would least expect to really put up a fight. But I think he would be able to do it. I think he'd put up a commendable effort. Do I think he would, would kick my ass? I don't know. Maybe. But I think he would be very likely to kick my ass. Especially if his Italian heritage is correct. I feel like you've got to be very strict in the kitchen, especially uh, with a chef at the same caliber as Chef Boyardee. 
I'm looking it up. Founded by Italian immigrant Ettore Boyardi. Where did he immigrate from? Italy. Yeah. I feel like Italian kitchen's pretty damn strict. I feel like they, they're throwing pots and pans and stuff. Or at least that's how Italian Americans did it, you know. The king himself of Burger King. I mean, I I'm a little conflicted about this one. Because I I think that he's not used to fighting. I don't think he's used to physical altercations. I think he would have his minions attack me. Which makes me think that maybe he would bring some minions to the fight. He would he would send out a bunch of other guys, like smaller guys, to just punch me to death. Uh, but him himself? I don't know. I think... I just don't think he would be very well coordinated. That's that's the vibe I'm getting from him. The Gerber baby? I mean, we don't even need to discuss this one, do we? It's a it's a damn baby. I would I would murder it. It's game over for the Gerber baby as soon as it crawls into the arena. Buzz the bee. I mean, this is a similar situation to the toucan. It's, I mean, it's a flying insect, so it's going to take a while, but he's going to get worn out eventually. And he's going to land somewhere, and I'll just, I'll just step on the guy. I mean, he's a bee. It's as simple as that. We got the Keebler elf. This guy looks like I would be able to just punt him. But I think he would, he would be able to put up somewhat of a fight. So I'll put them in most likely to kick their ass. I would be I wouldn't be canceled for the baby because the baby consented to fighting me. The baby was the one that crawled into the arena. It knew what was coming. It, it signed the waiver, you know. What can I say? The Lando Lakes got this. She's not even on the Lando Lakes. Uh, butter packages anymore so this is kind of this is an outdated list this list is about to get cancelled um, but I mean honestly she seems like a pretty strong contender here if we're talking about the humans that are on this list I think she might be the absolute strongest if we're comparing her against Chef Boyardee the King of Burgers and the Gerber Baby I mean she's up there I feel like she's been meditating for, I don't know, however long the company's been around. So she's been, she's been, you know, ready for fighting for a long time. She's been thinking about a lot, probably, she's probably aligned perfectly for, you know, an incredible fight. So I'm going to put it most likely to kick my ass. Then we got Colonel Sanders. You know, he's in the similar age range as Chef Boyardee here, but I just don't think that Colonel Sanders has what it takes to pull off some of the tactics that a man like Chef Boyardee would throw. You know, I was talking about Chef Boyardee throwing pots and pans around in the kitchen, but Colonel Sanders just seems like a more jolly guy. You know, he'd probably resort to using racial slurs instead of throwing physical objects at people. So... I mean, I feel like I would I would pretty easily be able to kick his ass. Um, especially if he does decide to invoke racial slurs during our fight. That would probably give me an even greater motivation to kick his ass. So I think that would be a pretty good fight. Next up, we got the Leprechaun from the Lucky Charm cereal. I don't know if this guy has a name or not, but I'm just going to call him Lucky. I think that's a pretty good name. Now, he he has a, a trick up his sleeve, and it's magic. So I think this fight is pretty unfairly balanced, because as far as I can remember from the Lucky Charms advertisements, he was teleporting himself all around. You know, before the kids could capture him, he would just poof and be gone. So I don't know. He seems like he has a pretty huge upper hand here.
But I mean, he his main focus is getting is making sure that the kids don't take his lucky charms. I'm not interested in doing that. I'm just interested in a fair fight. So I don't know if he would try and invoke those tactics because, you know, he's not at risk of losing his lucky charms. So he might be fine with just fighting physically and not, not resorting to any magic. If we, if we have a blanket no magic rule, that kind of takes away a lot of these guys' abilities, though. Use the kids as bait. Maybe I could, yeah, maybe I could have the kids in the arena and I can have them run around. And Lucky the Leprechaun, if that's his name, would be so distracted by them that I would be able to just absolutely pulverize them. I mean, I... Even with the magic, I feel like we would set a ground rule that you can't leave the arena. So I feel like, once again, he would get exhausted. Because using the magic to teleport yourself, that can't be just, like, nothing. That, that's that got to take some level of effort. So I think he would get worn out eventually. And I think I would, I think I would kick his ass pretty easily. Because unlike the Keebler Elf... The Lucky the Leprechaun has already shown himself to be a bit of a coward, so I don't think he would be able to put up much of a fight. I think he knows it, and that's why he always runs away from the kids. He's he's scared of the kids taking his lucky charms. We're, we're talking about a man who's too scared to, to confront some kids, and, and we're discussing whether or not I'm going to be able to kick his ass. He doesn't stand a chance. He really doesn't. Mr. Peanut. This is a similar situation to the Mr. Burger King here, where he doesn't even seem like the fighting type, you know? He seems like he would rather work things out, not diplomatically, but he would probably offer to give me money instead of fighting, which I would, I would decline. I'm here for a fight. So in that instance, I think he's more concerned about fighting than maybe the Burger King would be. So I think I'm going to say I would be more likely to kick his ass. Next up, we've got Ronald McDonald, who doesn't have any magical abilities or known traits of regarding avoiding conflict. Um, he has been retired from the McDonald's branding for quite a while, so I don't know how his physical appearance is these days. But I imagine because he's not been in the spotlight, he's kind of allowed his body to go downhill a bit. And he might not be in the best physical shape any longer. So honestly, just basing it off of how Ronald might have been taking the last couple of years, it's probably been a little bit depressing for him because he's he's not been getting any work. So what has he been up to? I think he's just been sitting around and he probably developed an alcoholism problem. Uh, he's probably gained a lot of weight. He's just not, he's not feeling himself lately. So I don't think he'd be up to fighting. I think he would put up a bit of a fight though. Not, not to say that I think I would single-handedly crush him, but I just think he would not be in the right headspace for a fight. You know, next up we have Pepsi man. And I mean, just look at the guy. He's, he's very strong and he's got the power of the Pepsi corporation on his side. Very expensive. Uh, training sessions are, are definitely in the works for him here. So, I mean, I think that he's going to have all the training in the world and he's already strong. So I think he's, I think he's going to kick my ass. It's pretty, it's pretty easy assessment here. You got the Danimals uh, monkey. I mean, this is a very physically active monkey. So we're dealing with someone who's not going to be afraid to really move around, jump. I mean, he's got a lot of energy. He's always skateboarding. He's jumping. I mean, we're dealing with someone who has energy that is just off the charts. I think, I mean, I think I would be worn out before he would. That's for sure. So I think, I think I got to put him in Would He'd be most likely to kick my ass. We got the hamburger helper love next. And I mean, I really don't see this ending very well for, for the hamburger helper glove because 
you don't have a lot of appendages, you know, you've got the spoon in your, in your hand, but you're, you're holding on to it with a finger. I just don't see him being able to do much with that. It's just, it's not looking good for him here. I mean, you're a glove. I could probably put you on my hand and just bash you into a wall. Just go like that over and over until you just cry out for mercy. So I'm going to put you in, um, I'm going to put you in wood, kick their ass. Realistically, they'd all kick your ass financially if you fuck up their mascots, late game win from corporations. That's true. In the end, I think I would, uh, the, the companies would come after me in droves for ruining their mascots. They've got the owl from the Tootsie Roll, Tootsie Pop commercials. I mean, this guy's ancient. He's been around forever. I don't think he has it in him to fight anymore. Um, that commercials from like the nineties or eighties or something. Uh, he's, he's been doing the same thing for, you know, a long time now. Uh, and he's an owl. It's kind of in the same category as Toucan the Sam is <laughs> Sam the Toucan, where I think I would just wait for them to get tired from flying around and I would just, I would just punt him across the room. Warheads. I mean, they're little tiny guys. I feel like I could step on this guy yet again. Um, I think it's a no brainer here that I would kick his ass. So, I mean, pretty resounding, uh, thing here. I mean, I, I feel like I can pretty easily beat up a lot of these guys, to be honest. I feel like this is a pretty fair list. I'm very curious about the community ranking here. Yeah, that's that's about what I had. People are okay. The frog is the only thing that I really have a problem with here. Some people think that they they could beat up the sun. Are you kidding me? Dude, you're gonna be scorched. You're gonna get your skin burnt off before you can do anything crazy <laughs>